In this video, I'll use NetLogo to demonstrate how preferential attachment creates a power law distribution in scale-free networks. I have NetLogo open on my computer. You can download NetLogo from the website of NetLogo. The link of the website is posted in the description section below. To access a preferential attachment model, we go to File, Models Library. You see many models here. The model we are going to use is under Networks, Preferential Attachment. Preferential attachment is one of mechanisms that creates scale-free networks because Barabasi originally described this mechanism for creating scale-free networks. This model is also called Barabasi scale-free networks. Let's open this model. Here is the setup. We first click the button, set up. What it does is that we have two nodes in the network right now. Then we add more and more nodes to the network. When new nodes join a network, they don't pick a node randomly. Instead, they have a preferential attachment. And this preference means a new nodes tend to connect themselves to the network hubs. What are network hubs? They are the nodes at the center of the network. They are the nodes that have a lot of connections in the network. In this model, if we click the button, resize nodes, then we begin to see the nodes here is bigger than the rest of the nodes. So that means this node is the hub of the network now. Now let's click go to see how the network will continue to grow. Here, we still have our central nodes here, which is a little bit bigger. Let me click the button resize nodes again. Here, we see one, two, three, four, five, and probably six. We see six network hubs. They are the nodes who have much more connections than the rest of the nodes on the periphery. The mechanism of preferential attachment that people's preference when they join a network creates network hubs. Let's click go button again and see how the network will continue to grow. Now we have over 200 nodes in the network and we see multiple network hubs. One, two, three, four, five. Let me resize the nodes and see if we have new hubs in the network. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have about seven network hubs depending on how you define hubs. The smaller the nodes are in the network, the less connections they have, the more periphery they are in the network. Let's look at the plot here. On the top, we have degree distribution. The y-axis says degree. Degree means the number of ties a node has. The more central the nodes are, the higher degree they have. The y-axis represent the number of nodes. What does this plot mean? Now we have 233 nodes in the network, and we have 153 nodes that have only one tie. A majority of the nodes in the network have only one tie. But we have some nodes that have a degree centrality of 24. 
they are the network hubs. The number of those network hubs are very small because the, here we only have very few network hubs. This distribution is called power law distribution. The power law distribution is different from normal distribution. If it is a normal distribution, that means the number of nodes peak at the average. But in power law distribution, we usually have very extreme values. So most of the people who have very few ties, most in this network, they only have one tie, and we have very few nodes that have very large degree centrality. This small number of nodes are like the 1% in our society who have a large amount of wealth. If you see a power law distribution, it usually means the network is a scale-free network. We have a very long tail. The plot below is very similar. It's a still a degree distribution. It's just on a log scale. Here we have the degree on log scale and the number of nodes on log scale. On the log log scale, it shows a trend of straight line. Scale-free networks actually can be observed in a lot of real-world networks. For example, researchers' collaboration networks tend to be scale-free networks that have a power law distribution, and also the citation networks. You see some articles are highly cited, but most receive very few citations. Scale-free networks can create the Matthew effect because they are already the network hub. When the new nodes join the networks, then they tend to have a preference to connect themselves to the network hubs. Over time, those network hubs will receive disproportionately more ties than the nodes at the periphery of the network. That's why we call the Matthew effect the rich get richer effect. If you want to know more about scale-free networks, you can check out my earlier video on scale-free networks.